Welcome everybody to Eye of the Serpent Tarot for another pick a card reading. So today I'm really excited because the Oracle deck, the latest work from the, the brilliant Danilo Sonino, um, the Oracle deck Familiar Spirit has arrived. So I instantly wanted to do a, a reading. So this deck, I actually interviewed Danilo about um, a couple of months ago. So it's a Kickstarter that I backed. Uh, so if you're interested in deck creator interviews and want to hear a bit more about his thoughts in developing this and a bit about some of his other lovely decks, then certainly check that out. I have a playlist on deck creator interviews. But you don't have to to see this. That's up to you. This this deck is, is called Familiar Spirit, and so it's all about kind of the familiar sort of animal familiars, that kind of sense, you know, the spirits that are around us that talk to us from nature. What I wanted to do was something a bit fun with it, um, because there is a sense of whimsy and fun to much of Danilo's work. I mean, it's pretty deep and, and can go into some very interesting places, but it also does always have that kind of, uh, as I say, whimsy or, or lighter touch or, or a different way or a different perspective of looking at things. So what I thought I would do with it is I would ask, who's on Team You? What we're really looking at today is who are your allies and admirers? You may or may not know who they are. So it may be that, that this surprises you because you recognise one or more people that you wouldn't have thought was on Team U, but they are. Or it could be that, yeah, this is your posse, this is your gang, and you really recognise them. So we're going to look at that. So we're going to be looking first at their nature. Uh, and I'm going to use, apart from the familiar spirit, I'm obviously going to use one of Danilo's uh, tarot decks. So I'm going to use the white fly tarot to, to go into this in more detail. And I'm also going to use the Blue Dragonfly deck because we will be using this deck a couple more times as we go through. Once to see something about your energy and what draws in your admirers and your allies, but also to have a look at what might be a competitor, an antagonist, or someone who isn't on Team U that you or you and your posse, so to speak, have to deal with. So what we have here to start with, this is I shuffled and asked for each each pile an aspect of someone who is on Team U or a group of people that are on Team U to help you sort of like navigate to which pile or piles, by all means go to more than one if you want, um, that you, you are best drawn to. There's also underneath there a couple of other cards from this deck. I don't know what it is. They were just intuitively shuffled and chosen. So that will describe your team, your allies, your admirers. And then as I say, we're going to have a look at what draws them to you using this deck, then we'll go into the tarot and the other bits as we go through. So for pile number one, we have Rhino, which talks about solitude and ambition. So think of it, this as energies around people who could be your admirers or allies, bearing in mind, as I say, that they might be secret admirers. They're probably not secret allies. So sometimes we can have, I guess, allies we're not aware of. The second part is Crow, healing in the dark. And the third part is Owl, wisdom. So whatever you feel draws to the sort of people that could be your allies or admirers or something that you recognize here in your, your best friend forever, your ride or die or whatever, whatever works for you, when you know what reading or readings you want to go to, as usual, I've got the, the uh, timestamps in the description box below and I'll see you in your reading. Welcome part one to your reading. So I've got to say straight out from the gate, this is a pretty spiritual group of allies or admirers, I think, spiritual or very strong, very righteous in many ways, but in a good way, not like righteous as in judgmental. But it's it's three really interesting familiar spirits here to recognize, you know, to, to represent them. Firstly, we do have rhinos, solitude and ambition. There is a sense here, I think, you may be a bit of a loner and you may draw loners to you, or you may be very different and they're very different, or you might be the sort of person who, even though you have a lot of sort of extroversion potentially, you draw people who are more one-on-one -on -one type of people. I feel like this is primarily one person or as I say a type of people that has all these aspects but it could also be that there's a group of people that are drawn together because there's a kind of a similarity therefore I would think you had a similarity but I, I do think that that this energy here this is a person who is is a bit of a loner is very happy and comfortable in themselves so they are an ally or admirer because they like something in you, not that they need something in you. This is quite an ambitious person, so they get on with their job, they get on with what they're doing, and I don't think they stop particularly. You know, the sense of a rhino, the height of a rhino, they, they, don't, they don't take offence easily, they don't get swayed easily, they move forward. So as an ally, they're exceptionally powerful because they will help see you through things. 
And as a admirer or friend, they want the best for you in ambition. They want the best and they want the best for you. So this is this could be an admirer, an ally that almost operates a bit like a coach. It could even be someone who's a manager or something like that that you come across in your workplace. It's just this sort of sense that they see in you something similar to them. They're very comfortable in your company, but they're not... They're not the sort of person who, if you said, come to this big party or this rave that they turn up, they go, no, I'll see you some other time. Because <laughs> they're, they're, they're very within themselves and I don't think they're terribly socially, um, they're not a social butterfly, let's put it that way. Very spiritual. If this isn't the same person, there's sort of someone else here with eagle flying high with the spirit. The eagle to me, it is a spiritual sort of energy, an energy of sort of flying towards the celestial realm, someone who's very interested in that. The colouring here with the with the purples in particular connecting to the crown chakra. I think it's interesting with the sword. I wouldn't mind betting that that tilts towards someone who's an air sign or has air strongly in their chart in some way. Um, but... But the other thing about the eagle is I always think there's an eagle eye view of, of what is coming. This person, if it's not the same person, has has a very good prophetic sense. They can really see things coming very strategic, see very long term. In fact, it's really interesting because I feel like these two could well be friends or if they aren't already, if you introduce them, they would be natural friends because I feel like the rhino here, the way it's depicted with the background, could you know, is, has that steadfast, I'm going to move through the desert, I'm going to move up the mountains, I'm going to do what I need to do. The eagle is sort of like the companion who could fly up and see the best route. So this one has the tenacity. And um, as I say, it could be the same person. It could be aspects of the same person. But if they're two different people, this one has, as I say, the aerial view. They, this is someone that you could go to for perspective. This is also someone you put those two together. They would be in fierce agreement that you are meant to be successful and probably flying high with spirit. Because the third element here, which again, may be all part of one person or could be a few, is dear, virtuous lifestyle. And it's a couple of things that strike me about this. It's like, it's like this. This could almost be like a selection committee that decided that you were someone who was who was worthy of some very big mission or some very powerful position because you have the ambition and you have the self sufficiency. It's like they kind of they're almost seeing some of themselves in you. They they can see the trajectory of what you would do and why it's important and I think why it's righteous and then we've got this sort of like virtuous lifestyle that you would you would deal with this well and with wisdom. I find it very interesting this one has a crown though it appears interesting it's a crown with a blue flame above it to me that sort of suggests communication. I think this person is is very good at communication and maybe recognizing a similar thing for you. There could be a very strong telepathic link with this one as well too. But the overarching sense I get when I look at it is sort of you and your your team being these very, very sort of righteous, as I say, in that really good way, uh, sort of strong energies to move forward, to see things in into the future and to have an ambition and a direction that is virtuous, that is actually going to walk the talk. Like I've got to say, this one, if you didn't walk the talk, they'd walk away. This one will tell you the direction, but it's probably not going to then make sure you do it. They just, they just would sort of tell you what they could see. This one will give you strength. But this one in particular, I almost feel if they are three different people, this is the energy that's that's inducted you into this team. Or this is this is someone who may be separate to these, but who really sees something in you that takes you beyond beyond even what you're doing at the moment into some sort of leadership role. This may also be a spirit guide, actually, interestingly enough. It doesn't have to be. I mean I'm thinking these mainly are people, but but it could be a spirit guide. So I feel like this is the team that is around a future leader in, in a leader of people and ideas in social causes in spirituality and something like that because there's the grit, there's, the, there's perspective and there is the equilibrium and the alchemy of, of a virtuous lifestyle, a virtuous person. So that's, that's really powerful. They really admire you for really good reasons and they bring, they, they bring that same energy to the table. So let's just get a fourth card from Familiar Spirit to see what in particular it is about you that has drawn these people in as your allies and admirers. Wow. The bee, extract the honey of life. You're a really hard worker 
And you're also one of a community or of a group, and you would put the community or group ahead of yourself. This is what bees do. They're incredibly important to the world too. You know, if you, you know, there's the sort of like scientific stories that say we talk about all these environmental things, and which may or may not be an issue for us, but if the bees were gone, we're absolutely screwed. <laughs> so you're quite essential. They see you as really essential. They see you as a team player, but they see you as something more than that. So, I mean, whether this is friends who are just sort of kind of like cheerleading you on or whether it's people who are like mentors, coaches, managers, the people who decide to open the keys of the kingdom, I'm not really sure. This It could be a bit of both. But they see you as being incredibly industrious but also very positive. It's saying extract the honey of life. You're not... You're not kind of being into solitude because you've decided that people aren't worth it. Your ambition isn't just for yourself. It's actually about bringing sweetness to others. You see the long-term perspectives and, and you walk the talk. So you draw those sort of people to you. This is a very powerful thing. I used to always say in, in workplaces, particularly if you're in a, a difficult situation, like you know, culturally, you know, work culture, I mean, that kind of thing, that having moral high ground, really having it, not just the appearance, but really having it by basically walking the talk, being a decent person, treating people well, it was an almost unassailable position. So I feel like the rhino there might have a very similar perspective to what I did in that situation, and they see in you that capacity. So that's pretty good. So let's get some stuff from Tara. So let's um, let's see a little bit more about what your allies and admirers bring to you. What are, what are they putting on the table for you beyond what I've talked about already? And so now we're going to use the white fly tarot. The Emperor, Two of Pentacles reversed, the World, Justice, oh wow, Queen of Swords, wow, okay. So I do think that, that many of you, I mean if, this, if there is a love match around this, and it could be, it is, it is a love match that will last the distance, that can see the kind of future you have together, and it's, it's very very committed, and they see you as joyous. So if there's an admirer in that, I've been picking up a lot in this that's sort of like allies, but, you know, admirers as well. But if it's a romance, that's definitely the case. And if it is a romance with one or more of these, they see your mind as being incredibly sharp. Um, and so they they want to draw that out. They want to bring bring a kind of a, a synergy together on that of like equal minds. They see equal minds. So they're bringing that as well too. This is this is a powerful group of people, whether it's literally powerful situationally in an organisation or politically or socially or whether it's just they have a very strong sense of self, very smart, very smart. I'm feeling like the Queen of Swords connects particularly with the eagle energy. I'm feeling like the justice energy particularly connects with the deer energy and the emperor particularly with the rhino. But as I say, it could all be one person. You know, it will depend on who's coming to this reading. But they, they do bring a power and authority, a clarity of mind, a sense of balance. And they're bringing options to you to expand your world. Like this really feels like a cheerleading team who see you as, as needing to go the next step in your career, socially, something like that. But I do think for some of you, right now, it's like you've been seen or selected for something. You may not even know yet, for some of you I'm getting. You, it might be that people have seen in something in you that you haven't yet even seen or understood in yourself. And it's about elevating you and it's about bringing more onto the world stage in some way or something like that. So they're going to bring options. They haven't said it yet, but they are bringing options. They also, if it is friends around you right now and it's more like cheerleaders, they are, they are wanting to nudge you towards options but not make the decision for you. So they really respect your way of thinking. They think that you, you are a just person. They think if you were, like if you were in an organization and this was part of your team and you're a teammate and there was a job coming up as manager, I feel like your teammates would be thinking you're the one we would want to work for. There's that kind of energy about it. So it just depends on, on what environment we're talking about here. And as I say, if it is a love, if there's a love thing around this, that your sort of admire and ally is, is a love match in one or more or some combination of those energies, there is a real sense of equal power here and, and, and longevity and potentially, you know, wanting to sort of say, you know, let's get married, let's move in. You know, it's something committed, definitely. Okay, so let's see 
Um, what is it in you particularly that they're admiring? We already know around the honey of life, the fact that you that you are there for the community, you are you are essential. You are an essential building block for the good life in, in one way or the other for them. So what are they particularly admiring in you? Ace of Pentacles reversed, Seven of Cups reversed. The lovers. Some of them, this is about love. For some of you, there is a love connection here. Wheel of Fortune reversed. Nine of Swords reversed. Okay. I'm going to jump first to in any situation where this is about love. Um, and as I say, it might be one or a combination of all those energies. If it's love, then then there is definitely a, an attraction. You, you are like a soul twin attraction to them, if that's the case. That's how they see it. They see you as having had some issue around timing and finding the right person, but they also think that was necessary. Like this, this energy is particularly playing out here for me. It's like an understanding of the right timing and that you've started to understand and see that. If this energy resonates to any of you like someone who's a potential lover, so someone, as I say, who can really see the big picture, who sees long term, then I really think they, they can see that the timing um, that your that what might have been disappointments before for you in love, it's is the timing to bring the right energy in. That doesn't necessarily mean actually this has to be the person you love. It could be one of these, or it could be someone else. But there's some energy around love where there's you you have really good timing, and you're starting to realise that, and you're coming out of of where it wasn't working for you. You're coming into something that is, and you're being very realistic, and you're not starting anything till you're sure. So, so it's certainly around love. If one or other of them is someone who could be an admirer, they see the timing is right and that your, your soul twins that have come together. If it's somebody who's a friend watching you around that, they see that you're ready for love um, and that you've really sorted it through and dealt with things and understood and learnt from things and have, again, that ambition and that sort of virtue, you know, that you might have been done wrong by, but you would not do wrong by others, that kind of thing. It hasn't, it hasn't soured your capacity of love now if it's not about love if it's about sort of other things you know like career in some way spirituality in some way they admire your capacity to make the right connections even when in times that that things don't seem clear they don't seem lucky they seem worried it's like you you know how to make the right connections how to how to build bridges where there is conflict all of that sort of stuff again very emotionally pragmatic you're kind of this is, feels very much like the rhino sort of energy is connecting particularly here for you, that it's like we just get on with it, we just get on with it, we make the right connections, we, we help people through times of change. And again, that you don't rush into it. I do think that most of them feel there's an unfulfilled potential in you. So I do think, as I say, I actually think for some of you, this is maybe even a group of people you don't know yet, or they're further up in an organisation or something, but they know you, and they're they're looking at you as as a prime contender for something. So if that resonates or comes true, that there's a very strong positive energy, and these are good people. I think they're the good people who see this in you. Okay, so. Let's therefore, that's the good sign of it. What might you be up against? Where might there be non-allies, non-admirers? And then we're, I'm going to put out four tarot cards and then I'm going to draw a fifth card from this suit to just, uh, this deck, I mean, to just see what the energy of, like, as I say, a competitor or a non-admirer might be for you. So firstly... The Hierophant, oh, that's interesting. And that's very interesting we've got a deer and a deer. So there could be somebody who is who is a competitor who's like this energy but isn't doesn't have the virtue. Nine of Wands reversed, Six of Pentacles, the Star reversed. Okay, now, for some of you, if, if it was about love and so forth, there might have been someone who is a bit like this energy, as I say, that kind of deer energy, um, Probably someone who appeared to sort of be more sort of successful, more authoritative, more knowledgeable, something like that, that, that may have been an issue or may be an issue still. They may be a competitor, particularly you know, for this kind of energy. But, but the thing about this person is that people walk on eggshells around this person. They, they are very much, they're the boss and that's it. They, they, they would not, what is attractive about you to these people 
is that, as I say, with that B energy, you're part of a community. You may well have leadership potential. You may well be the one that they're wanting to put you in that place but or want to cheerlead you to get to that. But you're not, you're not about becoming the boss just to lord it over people. But there's someone who is a bit like that. They're not really following a spiritual path. And they may be someone who has a sense of entitlement. So whether it's entitlement around, you know, as I say, a career thing moving forward, something like that, a leadership role, whether it's entitlement around love, that they should be loved because they've got so much more to offer or something like that. But they're, they're very, it's a kind of narcissistic energy, but it's built on them having some sort of prestige or privilege or something like that. So let's see what we get as their energy from the familiar spirit deck. Oh, the shark, red flag. That kind of makes sense because this is a kind of narcissistic, authoritarian energy. And this is not about this. This is about ambition and spirituality and vision and, and community. So your energy and your people around you, your team are about that. This is someone who's, you know, like the, if it's in an organization, they talk about snakes in suits. It's that kind of energy, swimming with sharks. There is, this person shouldn't be underestimated, though. You do need to be aware of them because they do have some degree of power, prestige, money, privilege, or something like that. Um, but they're not going to be hard to to spot, I think, because they are. They're very thin-skinned, very thin-skinned, and I think that will help because because you know you've got someone around you who, who's really thick-skinned. This is very thin-skinned. Someone who's very perceptive, someone who can see what virtue is as opposed to just the, the appearance of virtue. Do you know what it kind of makes me think of just saying that? It's like in Pride and Prejudice, you know, right at the beginning, Wickham seems to be the virtuous one and seems to have all the, the charm and Darcy seems to be the snob. But in fact, it's the other way around. And there's sort of something that the Elizabeth Bennet says eventually about, you know, one having having all the virtue and one having all the appearance of it or something like that words to effect it's that kind of energy so i don't think on one level they're too much of a competition and i think your particular team and you would be able to suss this out in a heartbeat but they are there so it's just to be aware that that if you were if you were you know if you were the the chosen one for a role or something they would not be above playing you know manipulative games to try and take over what you were getting or if it was in a love match to to try and try and out shine you in some way so that's interesting to see let's get also one other card actually i'm going to get two other cards i'm going to get for dealing with this person i'm going to get firstly another element from the blue dragonfly about what they may bring to the table but i'm also going to get the wild card that you have your up your sleeve with you and your team so what they're energy is oh i am enlightened wisdom spiritual knowledge ability expertise okay they like to see themselves as that this is why it's coming up as a hierophant for some of you this might be in a spiritual group it might be someone who's trying to set themselves up almost like a mini cult leader <laughs> or certainly as being more spiritually advanced you know and so forth this is why it's kind of these sort of like energies with the blue flame the blue flame there and then we've got the sort of like the 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 deer coming up again, the stag coming up again. So I feel like, but what I find is interesting is the flame on the truly virtuous one is reaching up, whereas it's like, it's like there's a download coming into here. And I'm not sure that that's coming from the more virtuous place, given the energy around this. But this person appears to be enlightened, appears to be knowledgeable, appears to be spiritual, but they're basically a narcissist, I'd say. Okay, so what wild card do you have up your sleeve? Spirit has my back. Spirit guide protection, superior help reassurance. Yeah. Basically, because you're doing you're actually doing the right thing as opposed to just appearing like it is, spirit's with you. This person is is full of hot air. So I don't think there's a lot to worry about. Okay, so we're also going to get some other decks just for a little bit more fun here about what it is, what energies your your team you bring in, and then what it is in you that is corresponding to that. Just for a little bit more. To, to help identify if you're not sure or just a little bit more information about that. So firstly, we're going to use pairings of astrology planets. So we're going to have Team U and you here. So, so basically, Team U, another thing that they bring to the table, another thing that might sort of help to identify those who are your most ardent allies and admirers, is Mercury and Venus. They, they are very beautifully spoken 
They, they, they enjoy a good conversation. They very much enjoy your mind. But they want beauty. They want grace with it. Probably they really like, I would think, the performing arts, the written arts, music, all of those sort of things. There's, there's that kind of a finer sensibility energy to them. And it's very easy for you to all talk when you get together. Even if you haven't seen each other for ages, you just talk instantly because it's just an, a natural heartfelt rapport. So they, they bring that. They're very nice energies. What do you kind of bring or draw? What is drawing them to you astrologically? Jupiter and Pluto. Yeah, they see you as the coming something. <laughs> you're necessary. You're necessary for change. You're necessary for evolution. You're necessary for transformation. And you're a benefic force. Like I really feel for, if you've come to the right reading, for most of you, for most of you, this is like being chosen for something. I really do feel that's what we're seeing here. Now, if it is for love, your your capacity to transform in a benefic way, your 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 sort of like yeah, the the the, the honey of life exactly is what draws these people in, and they they their mind and their hearts, or, or their mind and their heart, depending upon whether we're talking about one person or more than one person, you know, definitely sort of like is drawn to you. But I think I think for most, there's something here about about a mission that you have. That, that they're drawn to help you, that they're, they're there to help you. So let's also have a look at the two penny oracle about both the sort of positive and challenging aspects in both cases. So a positive and challenging sort of like array of things that you may see from your allies and admirers is touch, sensitivity, but sometimes numbness and sometimes tenseness. Okay. I think they're highly sensitive, actually. I think that the highly psychically sensitive, there's a very strong spiritual connection with you and and really acute kind of sense of what's going on. And it may be that the rhino has developed the kind of the thick skin because they've had to. They're very sensitive sort of energies. It's a very close, nice energy. But sometimes you might think the rhino actually sometimes might seem to be a bit numb. You might think is... Where's the heart under there? The person's like, you know, they're kind of often being a loner, but they are really sensitive. That's what's going on there. And the others, there's a great deal of psychic sense of sensitivity and so forth. Let's have a look at what you're sort of psychologically bringing that draws them in, both in what where it works well and where it could be a challenge. Sublimity. Okay. Resplendency. Yeah, they think you're wonderful. <laughs> There's something very powerful about what they see in you. It's, it's a sublime, and for those that are sensitive, they see you as meeting, meeting the, the standards, really. They may, at, on occasion, if, if, particularly if you're in contact or in conflict with this person or sometimes, you know, sometimes it might flip over and get a little bit exaggerated. Like, like if they come and they tell you you're the chosen one sort of thing, you might occasionally sometimes get a bit in your ego. So think about that. Um, yeah, and, and or you may go, no, 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 I'm, I, I'm too imperfect. How can I do that? But, but they think there's a really nice balance there and that anything that you need to deal with to expand into this role, you're capable of transforming into. So it's a very subtle energy in many ways, I think, between you and these people. Okay, let's also get a colour energy. So a colour energy, again, to describe them in their connection with you. Sepia, nostalgia, reminiscence, reverie. I think that if you do know these people, you've known them for a long time with that energy. Otherwise, it may be that they are drawing in a sense of old-fashioned values, old-fashioned sort of spiritual things, old-fashioned virtue in some way with that kind of energy. Or there could be past life connections between you. And then in terms of you and again the energy that they're drawn to white angels purity radiance oh i swear to god there's a very spiritual thing around this you're seen as being very kind very pure meeting very high standards these people have very very high standards but they they consider that you've met them all you know, or it could be one person who has all those and they consider you've met it and so they're right or die with you because you're worth it <laughs> Like, like, it's a very, very strong thing about what's great about you, I've got to say, coming out in this reading. All right, so let's just get you a couple of spirit team um, uh, adjuncts to this, because this is really primarily people that you know. So what spirit team energy are on team you as well? 
Archangel Uriel, illumination, inner power, ideas into form. Yeah, I do think that 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 energy would be around you because I think it is. It is it is about creating you and taking you to where you're meant to be. This is what these people are in your life for. And Horus, clear seeing, intention, perspective. Yeah, and that's particularly that energy there. Horus particularly connects to the eagle, I think. Uriel probably connects to the deer. And then the rhino is the kind of thing that brings it together, like the emperor energy to move forward and to give you the ambition. Because I think it's kind of they're here to, to give ambition to you. Now, again, if this is about love, you're the one. <laughs> you're the one all together. Um, and they feel that, that, that they just know. They just know you're the one. And they're probably right. You know, I don't think, I think they're very psychic, very sensitive, these people or this person. Okay. So last but not least, I just wanted to get a little bit of fun and use the love oracles. You know, so this is a bit of a humorous deck and sometimes it's just funny. So <laughs> take it just as humorous if it is. But I just wanted to see what their loving advice might be to you, what these admirers and allies that you have, what their loving advice might be, particularly since looks to me like either you're the one if it's about love and, and that's, you know, they've got you in a bit of a pedestal or you're the one for something that you're meant to succeed in and, and pretty much they see only you are the real person to do it. So their advice, oh, Joan of Arc. Okay. I rest my case. I think for most of you, this is about leadership role. This is spiritual. Their advice is only settle for eternity. Yeah, that would make sense with those energies. Love and faith will defeat violence. Yeah, you, you are the person, not this pretender and be not afraid of fire and arrows or anything that may come. So rhinos, taking it through and pushing it through. Eagle's giving you the, the perspective you need and deer is helping make sure you stay on the path where the angels will support you. So it's pretty powerful. You've got some pretty powerful um, people in Team U, I've got to say, Pile 1. I hope that you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 2, to your reading. So you can do the reading with Crow, Healing in the Dark. So I, I do think it's quite likely if that was a conscious choice because of that terminology around this card, that, that you know that some of your greatest allies and admirers are healers, are supportive, wise counsel for you, help you deal with shadow and issues like that, and are also very adept at doing that themselves. There might be at least one in this group with Healing in the Dark where you know that a very close ally or friend or admirer has had to go through healing as well, like either literally for something physical or something emotional. So that may have drawn you to it. But either way, there is definitely a sense of, of private and deep and, and energetically pure sort of energy of healing and getting to the shadow. There, there, there is something here that you're greatest allies and admirers either admiring you that you can do that and so they're drawn to it or they're able to help you with that they're like a guide in that sort of energy for you which makes it really interesting the other two elements here so this could all be one person potentially that has these three qualities it could be a couple of people it could be three or it could be a group of people around you we have hen maternal approach so there's a very caring nurturing energy here People who are your allies and admire you. And admire could be a secret admirer, someone who wants to, to be a lover, or it could be a lover um, of yours. They have a very nurturing, maternal, caring approach, very divine feminine. I feel like it's interesting. What I feel really strongly when I look at Crow and Hen is I'm getting Persephone and Demeter, um, the Crow for the sort of in the underworld kind of feeling, and then the maternal sort of in the sunlight Demeter energy. It's interesting how there's like, looks like there's an egg behind her, which I suppose makes sense with a hen, like the new growth, the new birth of things. It could say for some of you that your mother is one of your greatest allies and admirers or a maternal sort of figure in your life. But I, I feel like there's something here about your allies and admirers about understanding both the light and the shadow. And then we have wise stability with the turtle. And what's kind of interesting about the turtle, again, this is, this is, it's very interesting how these have come together because you almost have the hidden aspect of the healing and the soul and the, the visible aspect of the, the nurturing and, and healing on that level in, in the sunlight. And then you have a turtle, wise stability. A turtle can be out in the sunlight when he's come out from his shell, but can also go within the shell. So I feel like whether this is one person or a group of people or whether it's the sort of people you draw to you, there's something here about 
the capacity to be both seen and not seen, the capacity to be in shadow and light, um, the times where one is brave and, and open and out in the world and the times where one needs to self-protect. I feel like a very strong sort of spiritual and healing sort of energy around this. So it could be people who are your biggest fans because you are a healer. That's very possible or a spiritual guide or something like that. You could be a therapist and these could be people who are really on your side, both professionally or, you know, clients or anything like that. If it's around love and lovers, it's your capacity to be there and present, I would say, in both both phases that draws this person or people in and they feel safe with you but also able to withdraw if they need to. But there's, there's this balance between what's in the shadow and what's in the light, what is open and what is protected that is, is an energy around these people. So let's get another card from the Familiar Spirit deck and let's see what it is in you that, that they really admire and, and they ally themselves with. Ladybug, time of luck. This is interesting. I think you are seen as being very much a fortunate energy to help people when there has been difficulty and to, to reorient towards nurturing, to bring stability. Like, again, some of this could be around love and you represent the sort of lucky choice, the person who's actually able to sort of deal with, with you know, ride or die, thick or thin, all of that kind of thing. Um, that can be really trusted and be very private with, but also out and have fun with, all of those kind of things, ladybugs sort of flying around, all that kind of thing. But when I think of ladybug, I think about the, the you know, old poem, the sort of ladybug, ladybug. I can't even remember exactly how it goes, but it basically says, you know, that, that she needs to fly home because her home is burning and she needs to save her, her children or something like that. So I, I think there's a sense here that you are... What, one of the things that allies them and that they admire is that you're able to, to say the right thing, be there at the right time, just intuitively know when healing is necessary, when fun is necessary, when support is necessary. Like there's something around you that is like the most lucky thing in their life because when they need the different energies, you just seem to know. And it, it, it's so natural to you that it seems like luck, but it's like you have an inbuilt radar that draws, draws you to them. And if this is a love relationship, then you are probably to them the ideal after maybe a lot of healing and so forth. It's like finally finding that balance where they can be truly who they are, but they can also have their space where they can be in their shadow, they can be in their light. And someone who just knows, who just knows what is necessary. So so yeah, you're, you're lucky to them. And you are, you just have an instinct. You have an incredible instinct about this. So, so let's see a little bit more. So firstly, we're going to see with the White Fly Tarot a little bit more about them, like the people who are your allies and admirers, a little bit more about their nature. Nine of Pentacles reversed. Ace of Wands. Knight of Wands. Yeah, some of them, this is a love match. Some of them it is. Nine of Wands, Wheel of Fortune. Oh, yeah, you're lucky. Oh, yeah. They're lucky too. You actually will be mutually lucky, but there is something about luck. The timing around this, the person, if this is a person or if it is a group of people, there is something very lucky for both of you. You bring luck to each other. And the sense of timing around this, they have a good sense of timing as well. I think you maybe have the edge on it. You just There's just something about you. You just have an amazing radar for when when energy is about to be dissipated and it is needed, you, you're kind of there. Um, but they, they also recognise this. And they, they can kind of return in kind when if you are feeling kind of a little bit depleted, they can, they can help you and, and, and sort of rev you up as well too. So it's not, it's not just a one-way thing. Even if you are a healer to them, it, there is a healing that comes back as well. They're very, very much, I think there's more than one person associated with this. If there's a lover, there's one particular one, obviously. But this is, this is something about the sort of people in general who become your allies. And they become like a community or a group. There's very much a kind of three musketeers sort of feeling about this, all for one and one for all, that kind of energy. But I do think for some of you, this is very much a, a, a passionate connection. For some of you, there's definitely something about... Um, or they want, they want a passionate connection. 
they want to take it from an, this for some of you this could be someone you've just met and they they just sense that you're the one and lucky and they really probably are the one for you as well uh, and that you you have the nuance and the timing and everything to deal they they they're kind of like they're a little bit they're not they're not Jekyll and Hyde or anything like that but they they do need their alone time and then they also need their connection time and and you're really good at that so um, and I think they come in some sort of a group that you're around, but they want it to be something more. That's definitely the case. So if, if you're thinking about someone and you're wondering if they're interested and they kind of fit that, that they kind of have both the both the kind of like the, the – sometimes they need to be almost alone, solitary, contemplative, and other times they want to get out and really be seen and, and create and, and be vibrant. They're drawn to you because your timing aligns, aligns really well with them and they're definitely interested. Okay, so let's have a look at um, – what is it in you that they admire? A little bit more about that beyond the fact, as I say, that you've got this incredible radar for for the timing of things, when support is needed, what sort of support, support is needed, all of that kind of thing. King of Pentacles reversed, the star reversed, the world. Yeah, if this is a love thing, they think you're the, the soul twin. Three of Wands reversed, death reversed. Okay. If it's if it's a love match, they think you're the soul twin. They think it's beyond choice. Um, they think you've been waiting for them. You haven't. You have, and that you're that you are, and that you're navigating to them, not off on your own. But they think that you that you have yet to find your person. So they think they're the one, <laughs> and they probably are. But like you know, who knows? It depends on whether you feel it as well. If it's not a love match, if this is just more sort of like friendship and so forth, uh, they admire that probably anywhere in the world, you know, they could call you up or you might sense like almost telepathically what's going on. They, they think that you're almost egoless, that you really don't, you know, you don't care about sort of fortune and power, or any of those sort of things. You're much more interested in, in like the connection of the heart and the connection of the soul. And they like the fact that you don't have a fixed destination, that you're almost kind of always open to what is necessary. You're not rigid. One of the reasons why you can pick up on the wind like the ladybug when something needs to be done, somebody needs to be, you, know, you need to be with somebody or deal with something is because you don't have such a fixed idea about where you're going. You, you can go with the wind. You can, you can go with circumstances. You're not phased by anything. So, so that's the connection between you and your allies. I also want to have a look at if there's an energy like a like a not so big fan, like a you know an antagonist or a competitor or something like that that is in and around this energy, and therefore what what is the energy of that sort of person? And we're going to get four tarot cards, and then we're also going to get another of the familiar spirit to see kind of who is your potential competitor around these connections and so forth. Seven of Pentacles, the Sun, Eight of Cups reversed, Seven of Wands reversed. Okay, I just got for some of you, there's an ex who's around. Doesn't let go emotionally, hasn't really got the courage to do anything about it, but, but thinks they're the one and thinks that you should be with them. So for some, some of you, that's that's playing out particularly if this is around a love match so they could get in the way a bit you know they could like be trying to jockey for your attention they might be quite emotionally demanding so it's not necessarily that they're an antagonist but they're not they're not taking you towards these allies and these admirers it's it's pulling you back into something because they don't have the courage to move forward themselves but they don't want to admit that and they'd never admit that and they think it's almost like they think that they owe you owe them something Beyond that, if it's not an ex or something like that, it could be a friend who is a bit similar to that. They they do have a very strong ego and they do care about money and status and all those sort of things, but they're not they're not necessarily moving forward. They're kind of emotionally blind. They get emotionally stuck and blaming other people, so they might be blaming you. Let's see what the familiar spirit energy is to describe them a bit more. Links, hidden truths. Yeah, they're not necessarily to be trusted. <laughs> and the truth is kind of hidden from them. They, they hide themselves from the truth. See, one of your characteristics that really draws you to someone like this, who's, I think, or people like this, who I think are very self-aware and who do, who do know their light and their shadow and all that, is that you are able to really pick that up and the nuances and understand that. This, this person is not... 
is not their, their ego and their need for kind of acquisition is getting in the way of them them being truthful for themselves to themselves. So, and they could be a bit sneaky, but they may hold the key to something with that key, Dan. So you know they might be important. You may need to know about them. So it's just it's just wanted to have a look at that just as a little bit of an aside to be aware of that. Now we just want to go back to the fun thing of like your greatest admirers and allies and you, the kind of the balancing of the energy. So we're going to start firstly with astrology. We're going to look at a planetary pairing that tells us a bit more about your allies and admirers and then the planetary pairing that is what they admire in you. So a little bit more around your people. Team you, pile two. Jupiter, Jupiter. Wow, they're lucky. Luck. There's a lot of luck around this actually. You're lucky for each other. Like it's, and there's almost if it's more than one person, there's that gestalt effect where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. It's like you can do more, you can span more, you can be more because of the connection that you all have. But it's a very warm energy. They, they really, really like you. You know, I mean that should make sense with allies and admirers, but they really, really like you. These people, this person really, really likes you. You know, or could be in love with you, as I say, if it's a love match. And then what energy in you, in terms of planetary energies, is drawing them in? Wow, Neptune, Neptune. Look at this. Isn't that interesting? Two Jupiters, two Neptunes. Your psychic radar's off the charts. That's <laughs> what I'm saying, like the ladybug. It's like you've got an antenna. A very, very strong um, thing. Now, I'm just going to say this because, like, you might have heard that little bloom sound. And that's sort of just something coming up to to tell me a comment or something that has been maybe on a YouTube um, thing that I've done or it might be somebody else's, I'm not really sure. But it says, you're a great muse. So I think that's a message. I think you are a muse to these people on, on one level or another. I think that, that you are an ideal to these people and you allow them to go into their depths and know themselves really, really well. But it's a really lovely energy expansion of sort of psychic ability between your like your radars with each other are really off the charts. So it says I don't know I don't normally pay much attention except that the noise comes up when something comes up from from you know my my internet. But I just thought that was just too interesting to pass by. So I think there's a muse energy that's operating, but in a positive way. Muse energy can be tricky sometimes. I don't feel like this is a tricky energy. Okay, let's have a look, though, at personality aspects that they have and that you have. They're working at their best and also at their most challenging. So a little bit more about them personality-wise. Colour, character. Um, so they have a lot of character. They have a lot of colour. They're you know, the expansive, warm energy. And it, it makes sense. There's all the darker hues. There's the, the bright light. And then you've got the red hues of passion or whatever. So there's colour and energy around them. They're, they're fun. And they have a lot of character. Um, now, when it's not working at its best, they can be um, a little bit, it says taradiddle. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, to be honest. Um, and foofaral. I am not even sure. That must be some very ancient sort of terminology. I don't even know what that means. I think that all that sort of saying is that maybe sometimes they may be hard to fully understand, <laughs> but their, char their character could seem very quirky or different. I think though you're more than able to understand, but others may not get them in the way that you do. Okay, if anybody knows what those words mean, let me know in the... I don't often have words I don't know what the meaning is, but wow. Okay, let's have a look at what's drawing them to you. In you. Oh, they just dropped a whole bunch of cards, but we're using this one. Oh, wow. Okay. For some of them, they, you know, some of them, this is a love match. I said it was a love match for some. I'm actually feeling I want to just pause and pick up those cards and get a second one because I think that was meant to come out for if there's a love match and I think there's meant to be another one and that's why I dropped the cards. Okay. So I'm just going to shuffle to get a second one. So we've got that one if it's about love. And then more generally, sight. Okay. All right. So for some... You're the great love. <laughs> I was just saying, like, it looked pretty clear from the fact that we sort of had the, the Ace of Wands and the Knight of Wands that for some, there's a real attraction. It's a, it's a um, admire. It's a, I want to be with you. And they want the full box and dice. They see you as the one, basically. They want, they want you to be loyal and, and monogamous and just with them and not with others. Um, 
and they don't want they may see you as sort of someone if you didn't do that you're sacrificing some of the love that you could have and all that kind of thing so they may think that you particularly with that feeling with the ladybug where maybe some of your sensitivity has come from dealing with issues yourself that you may have your own hurts to let go of particularly if, as i say you had an ex who was a narcissist controlling type or something like that but that's it for that for the rest we have sight so they admire your vision they admire how you see things um, they may the only times that that would not work is if they felt you were disregarding them or not seeing them but I don't think that's going to happen but they may they may sort of see that there's a particular connection that you have that other people don't have and that they have with you so so your vision may be very much centered on those that there's this very strong psychic connection with including these people um, but it's not like you have to have it for everybody. So there might be a kind of almost a little bit of an exclusivity sort of energy operating in either way. Either you're the great love and they want you to be just with them or it's something about you and these people where the vision is at its height and, and it's sort of like if you are not as, as connected into others, that's not going to bother them. Okay, so let's also get colour energy around this. Actually, I realized I forgot something too, which we're going to get back to in a minute, but I'm just going to do the color energy. So color energy for you um, around, yeah, oh no, sorry, color energy for them, more color energy about who they are. Silver, insight, illumination, reflection. So they feel a sort of psychic thing too. It's a mutual psychic thing. And they, they can sort of, this is also a feeling like the, there's, there's something like maybe you meet at night primarily or, you know, that kind of like the moon energy is very strong. And you in relation to them, ruby, fearlessness, strength, warrior. Yeah, they see you as, yeah, the, the ladybug who can come and save when the, the, the house is burning down. And like very passionate, very passionate energy if it's about love. What I forgot to do is I was also using the blue dragonfly and it was around this competitor. So we're going to go back to that. Like we're dealing with a competitor who maybe doesn't know themselves all that well and is maybe a bit sneaky. I wanted to draw a blue dragonfly wild card for some of the energy they may bring to the table and then one which is your wild card in dealing for, with it. So the energy, you know, a little bit more about the energy that they could bring to the table. Quantum field, endless possibility, source opening. You probably had a psychic connection with them too. You're probably very psychic. This might be why this has come up. These, your admirers and allies want you to keep your vision on those that are positive for you, not to be blind to those that might have tried to draw you in. This person was probably quite psychic as well, but not, not sort of um, in a positive way. What's your wild card in dealing with this Lynx character? Let's create willpower, manifestation, manipulation. Okay, you can, you can, you can pick up manipulation a mile away, so that's good. And you go into the creative mode. I think that this person is like a dreamer with endless possibilities, but doesn't actually come through with the goods. It's all kind of ego. They don't produce. They want to be the best. They want to be the, the, the most psychic, the most spiritual, the most sexy, the most whatever it might be, but they don't actually turn up with the goods. You really do. Okay, so let's also get you a couple of angelic sort of energies to support you and your allies and admirers. Melchizedek, spiritual development, study, law of attraction. So, yeah, you, you and your people or your person, whatever this is, can really bring in and create luck. Like, it, there's a real magic to the connection here. And Baba Yaga, the wise and wild woman, duality, the witch, where it's necessary, bring a lot of power and, and so like truth, truth to things. So very good at dealing with this energy as well. Because this person does have some abilities or whatever, they just don't have the follow through and they've got a big ego. Uh, but, but there's a much better outcome with these other allies and so forth for you, I think. Now, just to close out the reading, just wanted to have a bit of fun. So... I'm using the love oracle. So the, the your admirers and your allies love you. So I just want to see what their love advice to you is. Now, this is a deck that's sometimes just humorous. So if it's humorous, just have a bit of a laugh. But if there are messages that really connect, then take the message. So firstly, wow, Britney Spears. Okay, so when gambling with love, hedge your bets. 
So I think this is this is really about dealing with this other energy and knowing like that this is a better connection if it is about love. She says, take the risk of getting hurt because being in love can be toxic, but the high is amazing. I think I do think this is saying that you've been through some toxic relationship as a friend, as a lover, or something else like that. These these and probably these people or this person has as well too. And then she says, trust your family to take care of you when you can't. Trust this group, they'll have your back. And they're, they're, they're your true spiritual family, or this person is your true spiritual um, family. So, so there's sort of a sense here of don't get caught in the, in the glamour that's not real. Because I also think that's sort of like if you think about Britney Spears and what she's gone through and so forth, it's like there's the glamorous world that wasn't what it appeared, and then there's the reality. This is more the reality pile two. So I hope you enjoyed the reading. I hope it resonated for you. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome pile three to your reading. So you came to the reading with Owl, with Wisdom. So I think that that would probably mean that you feel that at least one of your admirers or allies that you're aware of is, is wise. It brings wisdom to your life. Um, and probably sees wisdom in you. Most of these sort of, what I'm finding in these readings, there's probably a bit of reciprocity going on between your allies and admirers and you in terms of qualities. So there's sort of something about wisdom. I think that most of you, if you come to the right reading, your allies and your admirers are friends more than, this is probably friends more than lovers. Though it is possible that there could be a very good friend, ride or die friend, and then there could be maybe, if you if you are thinking of a potential admirer, as in a love admirer, there's someone who has wisdom and, and is very different, I would think, from the past and also is able to learn from the past themselves. So it would be kind of like an admirer who who had gone through something similar to you if you've been disappointed in love or something like that. They've learned from the past, they have the wisdom, and they can see that you are the better you, know, you represent a much better option. So certainly if you are interested in someone at the moment and you think that they could be wise and that they have had some interesting relationships in the past or they're wise because of the fact that they don't need to learn things twice, they, they really get it the first time something happens, that could be one person and there could be a friend. Or this could be largely friends who are, who are able to, you, that have been with you for a long time, I would say, uh, that's the most likely thing here because there's a sort of wisdom and the knowledge of each other from things that you've gone through together. Now, it doesn't mean there couldn't be admirers coming in or allies coming in, and there could be allies that are similar to friends that you've had in the past. That could be operating as well. But I feel like this is this is the kind of ride or die type of energy, and it's very deeply a friendship. Even if there is a lover here, there's a deep friendship associated with a deep loyalty associated with it. Um, but I feel like you guys have gone through a lot together or you've gone through stuff separately that's similar and you really appreciate that wisdom that, that all of you kind of bring to the table. So let's see with another familiar spirit card. What, what is it you particularly, what is it that they particularly admire and ally with in you? Pro, healing in the dark. And that's interesting. That actually was one of the other choice cards So because I shuffled them back in each time so that we had the full suite that we could we could get so there is definitely something here where you and they have gone through some stuff either together or separately but you understand that you've gone through it together it's sort of like it's got almost brothers in arms type of feeling about it if you've gone through battles of various sorts together not necessarily war though it could be i mean it could be literally something like that um it could be meeting and connecting through through healing in some way spiritual healing um, therapeutic healing something like that but they think that you you have really healed incredibly well and that you that you've done it i feel almost like they feel that you did a lot of it on your own i think they would have liked to potentially be there and supporting you and they were loyal but they knew this was a journey you had to go on your own and they really admire it um and and there is a sort of like we know this we've we've gone there too or as i say it's like you all went through something together, some sort of like battle of some sort or some sort of difficulty of some sort, and you've stuck through it together. You'd stick through thick or thin, and, and you all learn and heal together and have a lot of wisdom, and that sort of friendship is there. You know, it, the energy it kind of gives me a bit is in Lord of the Rings, you know, the, the hobbits, <laughs> like, you know, Frodo and the gang. It's sort of like going through something like that and like always going to be connected, always going to be together but like really did something that, that almost you and your people, you and your, your team 
other people wouldn't even necessarily know because they didn't go through it. So it's some sort of energy like that if you've come to the right reading. I think it's quite a specific sort of energy. As I say, there could be a lover involved in this as well too, but you've gone through a similar thing together or you've already gone through a lot together and, and you're, you're, you move together as, as firm friends moving forward or you've got a great friend who supports you and your, your uh, partner and so forth. So it's just, it's just a sense here that... A lot has been gone through, but a lot of wisdom has been got out of it and a loyalty that, that cannot be shaken. So let's see a little bit more about them. Let's see a little bit more about whether there's more than one or two people here, whatever number there is here. Just a little bit more to describe your allies and admirers. Ace of Swords. Two of Swords reversed. Eight of Pentacles reversed. The Hanged Man, the Three of Swords. Okay, yeah, this is this is very specific. I think if this doesn't relate, maybe try one of the other readings, to be honest, because it is very specific. This is um, the other energy I get off. It's a bit like, you know, the Grail Knights and going through sort of the perils to sort of like find the Grail. There's, there's, and I think I've got that by seeing the Ace of Swords there. I'm feeling like Excalibur, that kind of thing. There's, there's something here which is... Whether it's emotional or whether it's whether it's a cause that you had or whether it's yeah you know, it could be sort of it could be even something like I don't know you your your town had a, a cyclone or something and and you banded together and you supported each other and you learnt from it and you're not going to have to deal with that again in the same way because you've learnt from it it's just there's there's something there's been pain they are acquainted with pain and I think you are as well. But they, they don't dwell on it. They learn from it and they get new ideas. And they know that you can never have all the information. They have the wisdom to know that even, even learning from the past, which is a very powerful thing to, to prepare for the future, there still could be the unexpected. But they've got very, very talented at, at dealing with this, as I think probably have you. They, they know they're, they're masters at, at learning and evolving in some way. They're prepared to sacrifice when it's necessary. They're as loyal as hell. Really, really loyal. So let's see what it is in you that they're drawn to. A little bit more about that. Seven of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles reversed. The Hermit reversed. King of Wands reversed. Five of Pentacles reversed. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you guys are a team. Like, I don't know whether it's two of you, and if it, if it is a love relationship or something, you're so powerful and strong together, like nothing could break you apart. Um, but if, it's, if it's, it's more likely to be like a group of friends or a team or something, it's like you, you, are, you don't let your ego get in the way of your sense of community and connection. You may be the kind of innate leader within the group in a way but you don't you don't flaunt it you're you're about the group as i say it's like it's it's the grail knight it's the, the the hobbits it's the three musketeers it's that kind of energy your sense of community and connection um and it, as i say you would never let your ego or something like that get in the way of connection um and and they and you you don't hide away you don't you, you might heal in the dark but you come out of the dark and you come out wiser and it's always about what is the growth. So it's like whatever you guys go through, as I say, you don't need to do it twice. And there's a real sense of this is about sort of spiritual evolution. Whatever this is, you and they are extremely talented at it. You know, spiritually, you know, like in a cause, whatever it might be, extremely talented. And, and, and you are maybe the one that they think most interesting, even though you're coming up as healing in the dark, you're sort of the one that they think in the end will lead it out, but it's almost because you don't want to. I often say there's a saying that the person who is best suited to being the president of the United States is the person who doesn't want to be. And it's a bit like that kind of energy. They see that in you. Like it's, it's like the one who's kind of the leader within the group, but is not pushing it as a leader so that's really interesting now in a situation like this when you have allies and you have admirers you sometimes also have a competitor or an antagonist so just want to look at what kind of energy could be a competitor or an antagonist or a non-admirer or you know something like that in this in this connection i mean god help them really because you're so tight as a group but let's just sort of see what are, what are the qualities of 
those who may be competitors with you or with your allies and admirers, with Team U, Pile 3. Justice. Knight of Wands. The World. The Moon Reversed. Wow, so... This is a bit of an equivocal energy, I have to say, as an antagonist. I don't necessarily... This person is either... They're not really an antagonist, they're more of a competitor, but they just might have a different view of things, but they might be quite similar. <laughs> but they're a bit of a lone wolf, but nevertheless, they might be quite similar. Or they appear to be, like, on, on board with what you guys are doing. They appear to be with justice. They appear to be with, with sort of stuff that is, is, you know, healthy and brings things to a good conclusion. But there's an ego thing there and it will eventually come to the surface. So they're either like you, but maybe slightly different. Like this person, I feel, if it's operating, if they're operating reasonably well, because I don't necessarily feel this antagonist is, is bad um, per se. It's more like they maybe have a competitive view like you and your team. They want to bring things to the surface. They definitely want to be, there is an ego thing here. They want to be on world stage. They want to see, but they do think that they're fighting for the right cause. So it'd be like you were the, the, it's almost like you would be the kind of the, the heroes behind the scenes that were getting things done and this would be the person reporting on it who sort of gets, gets the attention or something like that. It, it's that at its worst, I think. I mean, it is possible. It could be someone who, who is very ambitious for the world and says that they're just, but they have lots and lots of secrets and use, in fact, the justice system against other people. That is a possibility. Um, but I think by and large, for most, it's like, it's not... And if this is a, a, a competitor for love, there are some similarities, but I don't feel... I feel like their, their, their ego is stronger. So if, if this person was drawn to the fact that you are not about the ego, then they're going to kind of like, kind of lose out anyway. And something may come out that makes that clear as well too. But I, I think for most, this is like this is like you and, and your team in a cause or something like that. And this is something they're not actually necessarily opposite you at all. It's just a different way of doing things. But um, it does come a bit more from the ego. So let's see what we get as a quality for them using the familiar spirit uh, deck. Something else to describe this this other person. Badger, I fight for what I want. Okay, all right. They may justify their own desires or whatever in their own ambition, and that may become clear. I think you and your ride or die people here, you fight for a cause. They probably fight for what they want, but it may appear to be quite similar to start with. I do feel a lot of this could be kind of political or social, even the fact that you've got red and blue there, particularly if you're in the US. <laughs> like, there's, there's something like that for some of this, I think. But the interesting thing is, if that's right, if I'm picking that energy up, they may be tilt towards the blue end of things. But but nevertheless, it doesn't really matter. I mean, so I don't think necessarily like I don't think it's anything necessarily good or bad on that kind of point. But they may they may also be able to kind of do either thing. Like I remember, and I and this person shall remain nameless, um, but there, there's someone who actually was a prime minister here in Australia at one point. And I remember reading an interview with this person years and years before, before he was even in a political party. And he talked about wanting to be the Prime Minister of Australia. And they said to him, well, which party would you be in? And he said, it doesn't matter. It's that kind of energy. It's that kind of, like, I want what I want. That, it's like that sort of person. But this, that person wasn't necessarily bad, like, but they, they, it was about them. I think that's the thing that's different. But otherwise, they may appear sort of similar, and they're also in the battle. They're also in the arena in some way. So what I want to do is I want to use the Blue Dragonfly deck, so another of Danilo's decks. And we're going to look at what's a wild card in their favour and a wild card in your favour around that dynamic. So a wild card in their favour... Time to choose. Crossroads, indecision, planning, proposal. Oh, isn't that interesting? Like the blue and red. It could also be about red pilling or blue pilling to some degree. Um, I think a thing in their favour is nobody really knows which side they're going to choose. And they may play two sides off against each other. So it's worth being aware of that. 
What's in your favour? What's the wild card for you? I am searching. Initial project, learning, training, blessing of loneliness. You don't need this person. They might try and kind of involve you in some way or something or get you to follow them, but your search is your search and you're very clear on that. Now, I think you you connect with your people, but it's like there's nothing, they don't have anything they can really offer you that is part of what you're really looking for and I think you're really clear on that. So I don't think you need to worry too much. So let's jump back to some of the fun in you and your allies and admirers. Let's have a look with various decks at aspects again of what are in your admirers and, and allies and what is drawing them to you. So firstly, using pairings of uh, planets for astrology. Another thing to describe your allies and admirers. Sun and Venus. I mean, it, it is possible for some of you that there is a great love associated with this. So I won't rule it out, but if it is, there's, there's a ride or die friendship with it as well. And you've both been through some stuff, but but they they still retain a great loving open heart. Otherwise, it's just this is the, the dog energy. This is the loyalty, this love, caring, support, you know, whatever happens. Then your energy with them, what they're drawn to with you... Mercury, Mercury, boy, they love your mind. They love the way you speak. They love the quickness of what you do. They love your intellect and your insight. Again, with their healing energy, your words are probably incredibly healing. Many of you might have very lovely speaking voices or singing voices or something like that. But your communication, your speed, your clarity, they love it. They're really, really drawn to it. Actually, interestingly, with all of that together, I don't know if any of you are musical, but this could be you and a band. Like it could be musical connection and it's ride or die, and you've been through a lot, and you're going to be very successful. I just got that with that. that there's, there's something potentially there if you, are, if you are into music. Okay, so then let's also see personality aspects um, for them and for you. In both their best form and also, you know, what could happen in, in the less good days. So for your allies and admirers got calculation. They're very good at assessing things. Yeah, because they've learned. They don't need to learn twice. Now, they could either be negligent sometimes, like calculate something as not being worth their attention, or they could use this ability for manipulation. Now, this is the thing. Anybody who is able to fight for a cause, anybody who is able to learn from mistakes could use that at any given time for manipulation. I don't think these people will. I think you kind of all keep each other honest, actually. But but it's one of the things that makes it so admirable when people with that kind of ability use it for the good is that they could use it for the bad. So that so and this energy here is a bit similar, but it's using it for itself. So if they went bad, they could be like this, but I don't think they're going to. Not with the energies that we're seeing there. And what do they see in you, both on your best days and your less best days? Order. So they think that you have a really strong sense of what should be, you know, like you have a, a sense of sort of virtue and so forth. Um, interestingly, I also think that you can conform when necessary. You can fit in when necessary. Um, they don't want you to be rigid and they equally don't want you to be so different. You, in fact, I think what they think is you have a very good balance between rigidity and disarray. You kind of know just where to to sort of press the envelope out, you know, um, push the Overton window, all of that kind of thing, but also where it's necessary, you know, for the good of all to, to not be too, too wild or too different. Okay, let's also see colour energy. So colour energy to describe them. That's interesting, this came up, but, but for... The, the you in that in one of the other ones, which is Ruby, fearlessness, strength, warrior, yeah. This is definitely a very strong group of people. You are very strong together or you're a strong partnership if it's a partnership thing. And if there's love, there's passion. And you, sunflower, happiness, joy, play. You know, you kind of, you, you might have healed in the dark, but you know how to come out into the sun. You know how to like move forward. You know how to like make things joyous and good. So that's a really positive energy. Let's get you a couple of angels or that kind of level celestial guide for you and your allies and admirers. Guru Ram Das, humility, spiritual practice, elevation. Yeah, there is something, there's something about a group, spirituality, doing the right thing, 
having the humility that's necessary. This is where this other one is not as strong. And I think for some of you, this could be around something spiritual. And Goddess Kuan Yin, compassion, divine mercy, kindness. Yeah, it's just it's nice. It's a nice energy. They they give it to you and you give it to them. Um, your clarity keeps them on the right sort of path. Make sure that you know, everybody sort of stays sort of like true transcendence as opposed to sort of like ego transcendence, that kind of energy. It's very kind, very nice energy, but it's kind of necessary, I think, because there's, I think you guys go through a lot. So just to finish off, I just wanted to have a little bit of fun again and use the love oracles. So this is a deck that can just be humorous. So if it's just funny, we'll just go with it being funny. But I just wanted to see what their, their love messages could be to you. And I mean love in its broadest possible terms. Oscar Wilde. Wow. One of my heroes. <laughs> no wonder I really like the energy of you and, and these people. So it doesn't surprise me. Also, the wit. Like, yeah, they like your wit. And the, the beauty of speaking. And yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So Oscar says, I can resist everything except temptation. <laughs> I think that's just humorous. I was, you know, he's a very, very witty person. Hearts are made to be broken. Yeah, so that you could have gone through stuff. And if this is a love match, then both of you have and both of you have healed. And he says, true friends stab you in the front. Now, I don't think they're going to stab you in the front. And I don't think, but I don't think you need to worry about that. But I think this is the true friends. You're always going to know where you're coming from with them. They're not the... the the potential antagonist is more the type that would stab in the back. So it's okay. It could just be kind of a bit funny, those sort of statements. But I do think there's something here about wit and elegance and and something also about causes because Oscar uh, did suffer for his, his preferences in terms of love in the age that he was in. So there could be something here about supporting causes and difference and all that kind of thing as well. But whatever it is, I think you and your allies and uh, admirers have a lovely energy and a very necessary energy in this world. I hope that you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings.